Welcome, welcome, welcome back to the In The Clinic podcast with Rob. And if you are looking to find out how to change your behavior, this is the video for you and this is your podcast. So again, my name is Rob Sumner, owner of Sumner Specialized Physical Therapy, Specialized Strength. And I really do these videos and these podcasts because there are a ton of people out there that are in pain. I don't want you to be one of them, so hopefully, You find something in this video, find something in this podcast that will truly make a difference in your life and that would mean the world to us. So overall, the last uh, week or so, um, you know, I've had a change in my life. My my grandmother passed away and uh, a lot of different individuals know this from an email I sent out um, last Sunday. And she was 94 years old. It wasn't a, a major surprise or anything like that. It was more... Um, of just the change of a milestone. I mean, my, that, that was my last grandparent that, that was living. Um, and she was uh, an important figure in my life that helped shape me as a person. And uh, in the email that I sent out, I got a lot of response back from people, a lot of um, email replies that, that commented on that, where I talked about our estates. And I was really going down to her house because uh, the powers that be, the family members that um, were willed her her property and stuff are looking to sell her house and all of, of her belongings. So they pretty much said to the whole family um, as a free-for-all, come down and grab whatever you want because anything you don't, we're selling. So, um, you know, I, I left my reflections in that email on uh, the <laughs> reality of our demise, of, of our um, existence that when... Even the people that care about you the most that have been in your life the longest, uh, your all your worldly possessions and everything that are important to you really whittle down to what people around you want and the rest gets either sold or thrown away. So um, a couple of key points that I made in that video is is really to um, the, the people that are closest to you in your life that, that truly value you as a person, um, express that to them often, but also... Uh, Shower them with the things that are important with you while you're alive. You know, if there's if you if you have a uh, legacy shotgun that you've had for generations, give that away early instead of late, uh, because then you can express the importance and value in that item before you're gone. Because it won't always be guaranteed that the individual that um, would value that possession the most and would use that as a memory of you and the impact that you've had in their life. Um, it tends to get muddled when you have a free-for-all with family members. <laughs> so uh, all in all, it was a, a real surreal experience for me. Uh, the blessing in disguise was I was able to um, share that with my son. And he was able to come down to their their property. And we walked the property. And, and we went to uh, a creek that was there. My dog swam in the creek. It's like 35 degrees out. And he's out there swimming in this creek and, and having a good time. The... Um, Memories that my son, who's 11, consistently asked me about, you know, all the stories I told him over the years. And, and we went through and, and picked out um, different landmarks that I had told him different stories on. And it started to click in his brain where some of these were and how it happened. And, you know, it was, it was a great memory lane moment um, for me to be able to share that with my son. And with uh, the sale of this property impending, um, a lot of those experiences are going to be lost um, only to the memory. So, you know, as a sad ordeal for myself, it's hard to have those changes. Um, I call them changes of the season and those milestones in your life that are uh, transformational. And it will never be the same at that point moving forward. And the passing of my grandma did that. It, it completely changed the trajectory of our family dynamic and, and what's going to happen with, with the property and um, her items. and So overall, you know, it, it express your love to people while, the, while you're alive. And uh, make sure you, the things that are important to you that you value, you, you um, pass those down to other individuals that will value them as well sooner than later. And then um, the other piece of advice is... Um, Take time on your will. You know, it, it seems like it's something that you don't think about too much, but it's important that if, if you want to leave um, a legacy to generations that are uh, come after you, it's important to um, 
create a will that ensures that legacy can can be followed because when you start getting multiple um, hands in the pot and uh, cooks in the kitchen things tend to get more difficult and muddled so for the people that reach out to me um, some emails told me their own experiences and their their stories um, I thank you I thank you for those and I thank you for uh, expressing the uh, gratitude to the email that I sent out and how it triggered you in a way that uh, allowed you to reflect on your own life. So for the people that, that replied to me, thank you. For those that did not and still read it and appreciate it, thank you as well. So, But today we're really getting into um, change of behavior. And the reason that this is important is because we're really ramping up at the beginning of the year with our specialized strength programs. And we're, we've got our premier personal training program that we're helping individuals transform their life and uh, start making positive steps in, in a transformational way. And I recently did a fitness, nutrition, mobility workshop here in the clinic. We had 25 people that came to the clinic and we um, were able to go through uh, different fitness, um, nutrition, accountability, limitations that we have that don't allow us to really achieve our goals. And it could be anything, you know, some people, uh, they think of weight loss, they think of uh, building muscle mass, uh, decreasing their balance, improving their mobility, um, just uh, getting more energy from getting better sleep. And there's a lot of reasons why we don't. And as, as I expressed in this um, talk, is that willpower gets a lot of credit for things and, and a lot of excuses for things. And willpower truly doesn't even exist. And I've touched this on a podcast before, and I'll just give you a short summary that, that willpower overall, scientists have looked into it, and they've tried to measure willpower in animals. And what motivates one animal to do something greater than another animal? And they truly can't find a, a metric that they can measure willpower. It doesn't, it doesn't uh, really resonate with certain traits or certain uh, abilities or genetics or other. So they've come to the conclusion that you can't really consider willpower a factor in behavior. It's not really about willpower. So if it's not about willpower, what's it about? What, what truly is going to uh, change the needle in your life that allows you to meet the goals that you want? So the, the, the biggest way that I can explain this is um, the best way or the easiest way to truly change your behavior is to change your surroundings. Because what we've learned is that it's really the habits that we build that create our behaviors, that create our outcomes, that allow us to ch achieve our goals. So if we can change our habits, we'll have a greater chance of changing ourselves to meet our goals, whether it's weight loss, fitness, um, whatever. So if you look at this in a simple form, the easiest way to truly change your habits is to change your behavior. And the best way to change your behavior and the easiest way to change it really is to change your surroundings. You know, so Think about it in, in a couple of ways. Learning new habits or breaking bad ones can be really hard. So if you don't want to drink alcohol anymore, by not bringing it in the house, that increases your chance you're not going to drink. If you move to a town that's a dry town that doesn't even have alcohol liquor in the town, there's a greater chance you're not going to drink. You've changed your surroundings. If you want to be better at your fitness, surround yourself with people that excel at fitness. Surround yourself with a community that excels at fitness. If you want to get better at playing the guitar, if your goal is to be a, a great guitar player, you need to surround yourself with people that play the guitar all the time and are really good at it. So it's one of the most valuable lessons that you can really take um, as far as an action. Because a lot of times we get stuck 
we get stuck with, well, I don't know what to do and I don't know how to do it and I don't have any willpower and I don't know um, truly if I can make a, this change and I don't know, um, I, I don't have all the answers. So we trick ourselves out of even trying. And we tell ourselves all of the excuses of, um, I don't know what to do, how to do it, I don't have time to do it, and if I've tried everything in the past and it failed. So if that's you, what you're really speaking to is, I need to change my surroundings. If you're trying to make an impact in your nutrition, and you're only around people in your life, your family, your friends that eat fast food, that eat candy, that drink soda all the time, your chance of being successful with your nutritional program is pretty low. If you want to make an improvement in your mobility, but you're spending all of your time only at work, only doing tasks that require you to constantly be on the move, and you're around people that do the same thing, you fall to the middle. So the best way to change your behavior is to change your surroundings. That doesn't mean that you have to quit your job, that you have to divorce your spouse, that you have to kick your kids out of the house, or do anything dr dramatic just decide what outcome you want. And then how can you change your surroundings to match that outcome? It doesn't have to be huge, but let's take nutrition. By not bringing Oreos, sugary cereals, items that don't promote your energy levels and your nutrition, if you don't bring those into the house, there's a greater chance you're not going to eat them. My greatest weakness is to have those type of things in front of me. It's hard. My mother-in-law always has Oreos in the third drawer down in the kitchen. It's hard. The beauty is they're not on the counter. <laughs> but I know they're there. I know she always has them stocked up. So the key is changing your surroundings. If you want to improve your fitness, how are you going to do that? Are you going to only hang out with individuals that are sedentary? Or are you going to find a group that likes mobility, likes movement, likes to increase their energy levels? So if that's you, if you can find that group, you can be a part of them, that changes your behavior, which then changes your habits. So I'll give you an example. In our premier personal training program, we have almost zero attrition. People continue with this over and over, year after year. We just had our uh, big legacy event, which was our very first inductee as a legacy member in our program. These are for individuals that have been with us for over two full years. So they signed up for a third year. They become a legacy member. If we paint their hand gold, they go on our wall. And it really signifies the simplest behavior change that you can do when you're trying to do a fitness program. And we express it to them right from the get-go, which is your goal is to touch the wall. Your goal is to drive all the way down here to this facility and touch the wall on the days and the times that we've agreed that you'll do it. No matter how tired you are or other things that get in the way or all these lifestyle um, reasons that we can't do it. If your minimum success point is just to touch the wall and then you can leave, you're winning. Because we know that 90% of your success is just showing up. What happens to get you in the door here? Well. I got to I got to go and change my clothes. I've got to get my fitness stuff on. I got to get in my car. I've got to drive down here. I've got to get out of the car and then I got to come in. That's enough of a barrier for some people.
because now you, maybe you're off work and you're tired and you're fatigued and I don't know if I can go in and your brain starts tricking you about you could just do it tomorrow. But if you make the commitment to yourself that no matter what, you're just going to come touch the wall. You don't even have to work out. By the time you walk through the door, you've done 90% of the work. And then you touch the wall, and while you touch it, you go, maybe I can do just a couple. I'll just do a couple sets. I'll just do a little bit of this. I'll just do a warm-up. And before you know it, you're having the greatest workout you've ever had. And you leave with the endorphin rush, and you feel good, and you think to yourself, you know what? I'm glad I went in there. That's a behavior change by changing your surroundings. Getting out of your house, coming down here and touching the wall creates that behavior change. You do it long enough, on the same day, same time, it creates the habit. So for us, the reason our program is successful is that we are consistently developing a change in surroundings that's changed behaviors, which then creates habits. It's not about willpower. It's not about who wants it the most. It's about reprioritizing your time by changing your surroundings. So all in all is what I'm trying to say. If you really want to change who you are, then you have to change what surrounds us. If you want to change who you are, you have to change what surrounds us. And it doesn't matter what it is. If you want to be better at guitar playing, be better around other people that that can really crush it. So overall, uh, anybody that's listened to this out there, what do you need to do? What is your goal? What is your change that you want? And if you want to change who you are, what do you need to change around you? What do you need to surround yourself with to make that behavior improve which creates the habit. What do you need to do? Feel free to reply to the podcast, reply to the YouTube channel that uh, we'll put the video on. You can shoot me an email. You can hit me on our, our website, sumnerpt.com. You can come in the office. What do you need? What do you want to change? What do you consistently tell yourself you don't have time for? You're too busy. You don't know what to do. You don't have the energy levels. What is it? What, what is the thing that you, you would love to change, but you don't? Tell me what it is. Shoot me an email. And then tell me what is the surrounding that needs to change to make it work. All right, team. All in all, um, food for thought for today. Hope you enjoyed this podcast. If you do, like, subscribe. Uh, let other people know about it. That's the best thing you can do for us is to continue to share the knowledge, share what we're doing here so that other people just like you can consistently have better wellness, better health, and hopefully get out of pain because anybody that benefits with this just means the world to us. All right, we'll see you next time.